the hell happened? Man, leave my hood open for one minute and it gets blown off the truck. It's all the way over there. Holy crap, it blew my oil pan off too. Jeez, I just can't leave nothing alone out here. Well, as you can see, I'm standing here, the hood's off my truck, so that could only mean one thing. We got some major issues going on here. So, in this video, I'm just gonna talk to you a little bit about, uh, you know, give you an overview of what happened and then what I've diagnosed so far. Feels like my tire's rolling. And um, then in the next video, we'll go ahead and uh, talk about, you know, further analysis once I get the cylinder head off. But to start off with, as you can see right here, this is the, uh, well, this is a closed co coolant, closed system for the coolant system. And what happened was it was building up a bunch of pressure and it was pushing all the way over here into the recovery tank. And then after a little while, it would like suck all back down into it and then it would overflow again and it was going back and forth like that. I caught it pretty early. So, you know, on the road I checked, there was no water or coolant in the oil. So, wasn't really sure what was going on. I checked the air compressor because the air compressor could sometimes do that if you got a cracked head. But just to give you an overview, what, where I think this originally happened was about six months ago, I blew the lower radiator hose on the radiator here and it drained all the coolant. It was all I could do to get it off the side of the road just to uh, you know, have somebody come out and repair it. And it was just lower radiator hose. About four days later, uh, it did it again, but it wasn't a lower radiator hose. It was a mid radiator hose that goes back to the transmission to run a cooler. Um, that drained about half the coolant out. I'd only put about 7,000 miles on it after that happened. Everything was running fine until I got to Laredo a few weeks back. And that's when this episode started happening. So as I got to, as I was going to California, and as I got to Wilcox, all of a sudden, you know, that little critical mass, the stop sign light came on. So I shut it down right away. I said, what's going on with this? The, the water light was coming on and off. It was just a matter of, you know, uh, whether it was over pressuring it or it got sucked back down in, the coolant that is. Um, the red stop sign came on, on the dash. So I stopped, checked that out. It said that the, um, crankcase breather uh, pressure or the crankcase pressure was high or something so the the breather is what it was so I put a new breather on it it still was working fine the engine was running great and I said you know I better deal with this now before you know it gets any worse so I called the company and you know told them we need to repower this load and then I was gonna just drive it home the next day because I live like, you know, 70 miles from Wilcox. And uh, later on that night, I went to start the truck because I keep a deep freezer in here and stuff. I went to start the truck just to put a final charge on the batteries before I went to bed and it was hydrolocked. So that told me we really had some major problems. So I texted a, a friend of mine that lives in Tucson. I texted him 911, he called me the next morning. Well comes my truck we had to rebuild that road it was all mudded out about three hours ago so Ray Al and I spent yeah about three hours out there and here comes Andy let's see if he can make it well he made it he would not have gotten through there he could barely get through there in four-wheel drive about three hours ago there's my blown up truck. I bet you that road is good and compacted down now. Say hi, Andy. Poor thing. My truck and trailer. Well, I'm going to have to brush up on my mechanic skills and rebuild that engine. Thank you, Andy, for your help. Andy just happened to be on his way home to Tucson from over in Texas, so he stopped by. We loaded this thing up on my trailer and I brought it home. 
So as you can see, I got the, the pressure checker up here. I put a pressure checker on it, the pressure tester, and I lost like five, five pounds overnight. It went all the way down to eight pounds. So I decided to go ahead and pull the oil pan and check to see where the water was coming from underneath, seeing how I didn't have any water in my oil. I thought that might be, you know, a far stretch, but it seems like the more it sat, the worse it got. So I pump it up to 15 PSI, get under there, and it's just dumping fluid out between the, uh, the piston and the liner. Not the liner and the block, but the piston and the liner. So I'm pretty sure we're, after a lot of research and talking to a lot of mechanics, um, including Cummins and Kenworth, they all seem to think that it has something to do with the head. I've heard the liner, it might have dropped the liner, but I'm gonna reserve judgment on what exactly is wrong with it until I get this head pulled off. And once I get the head pulled off, then I'll make that determination. We'll go ahead and do our tests all over inside of there. Um, it does have 820,000 miles on it, but it uses a gallon of oil about every 16, 17,000 miles. It's not that bad, um, considering how many miles it has on it. Last year I had a fuel pump failure, and as you know, that's usually a Cummins killer when that happens, but I run the AMS oil uh, bypass filter system and the AMS oil. Um, the mechanics that worked on that up in Wyoming said that they'd never seen one live past that, and they pulled the main bearings and checked out. They said they were like new. I said, well, why don't you just replace them since you got it apart? They didn't even want to replace them, so I'm fairly confident the bearings didn't get washed out. There's no oil in the oil pan. It wasn't until it sat here for about a week before I got to pressure testing it that it actually started, you know, coming out. And it was such a small amount, um, it was it was negligible, you know. So when we get the cylinder head off, we'll check for wash cylinders. We'll check the deck height and the protrusion on the um, liners, and we'll give the uh, you know obviously the head gasket a good inspection and. And the cylinder head but right now I'm kind of hopeful let's just hope fingers crossed let's just hope that all it is is the cylinder head or the head gasket um, and then we'll go from there but for right now that's where I'm at I gotta get back to work we'll see y'all later